Hello everyone, uh, tonight I'm going to process an image of the Dumbbell Nebula start to finish just using levels and curves. The reason I'm doing that is just to make it a bit more simple for anyone starting out where they don't have to try and think they've got to learn lots of different things. It's just two functions in processing software. So if you're new, hopefully this will be useful to you. Uh, so yeah, so before you get to the point where you process your image, you've been out, you've captured your deep sky object and you've probably got a number of exposures and what you do before you get to this point is you stack them in something like deep sky stacker stack all those individual exposures together um, to bring out more signal and to reduce the noise and then you save that as a tiff file which is what i've got here and then you'll move on to some processing software i use gimp similar to photoshop but it's free so what I'm doing here will also kind of apply in Photoshop. So as you'd expect, we're just going to open up our image to begin with. And this is the bit that freaks a lot of people out. If you're new, I know it did me when I first started imaging, is that you, you lovingly collect your initial data all night. You're out there, you stack all your images in Deep Sky Stacker, and then you save it and then you're, you're faced with a very dark image. You can maybe see some stars, but that deep sky image that you've been looking at on the screen all night with hope has disappeared and you get that sinking feeling. I'm just here to say that it is there. It just, the data just needs pulling out and that's where the levels and curves comes into play. So we go to color in GIMP. We'll go to levels to begin with. So this is the levels tab. Value manipulates red, green, and blue all at once, but we can pick like red or green or blue to move individually. So we're going to start with all values. This very thin spike is all our data that we've collected, but it's all compressed together. This left side of the, the graph is all dark data. The right side is all light data. So our curve is very much to the dark side and all our values are very close together. We've not got much dynamic range at all there. It's pretty much a black picture. So what I'm going to do, stretch this data out to the right. And to effectively do that, I'm going to move this arrow to the left, which makes this data closer to the right because we're basically bringing the right and side of the wall in closer so if i go out of this and back into levels again we can see that by moving this arrow to the left we've effectively moved all the data to the right and slightly stretched it out a bit it's not quite so narrow now and we can also see that we can see the dumbbell nebula on the screen but there's not much contrast because the background's also been stretched and the background, which you'd expect to be space and quite dark apart from the stars, is also quite bright. Now, it's also quite green as well. So what we can do is we can go to green and we can just manipulate the green and drop that down. And to get rid of the bright background, we can go to this side of the curve and we can bring that arrow up, I always forget to do that. Before we do that, we must go off just manipulating the green and go back to all values. So it moves all red, green and blue values together at once. We can move that to the right, which is going to darken our background. We do OK on that. And we've got an image, but it's quite dark. So what we want to do is stretch the image now using the curves function. Much like the levels, we've got all our dark information to the left, all our light information to the right. If I stretch the curve on the left hand side, I'm stretching the dark information, so I'm making the background that's dark brighter. If I go to the right and stretch the right hand side up, I'm stretching the bright pixels up so the stars get brighter. To get rid of these nodes, you can just drag them off. Yeah, so yank them off. There you go. What what we want effectively is somewhere in between the midtones. So we're going to drag the midtones up. 
and okay that. In doing so, it's brought up more more of the nebula detail out. The nebula looks brighter again. The background's gone brighter as well. So we go back to levels, and it's an iterative process going between levels and curves. You manipulate one, and then you have to readdress something else. So again, our background's too bright, so we're going to drag that up. But first, we're going to look at the colour of the background, and we can see it's a bit yellowy. This time, I'm going to go to the blue tab and just play with that slightly. I think that's helped a lot. If I do a split screen, we can see it's a bit jaundiced on the right and a bit more neutral on the left. And to get rid of the brightness in the background, we're going to drag. Oh, I've done it again, and I? I need to go back to value. So it manipulates red, green and blue all at once. Drag that up there. Darken that background. Now, to keep texture in the background, I recommend not dragging this too far. Like, it's quite common for beginners to do something called black clipping, where they darken the background too much. They take this point into their curve and you're effectively clipping off all the data left of that arrow at that point. So all this data here is disappearing. And it's like leaving holes. Like the background's so pitch black that it's got rid of some of the actual data of your image. So make sure you, you don't go too far with the background. Keep a little bit of texture in it, I recommend. I mean, it's, it's to taste, so you might like it pitch black in the background. I like to see some texture, so I'd recommend doing, doing this and just keeping a bit of a gap between your arrow and your curve. And you can keep going with that process, but as well as stretching out the information in your deep sky object, you're also going to be stretching, stretching the noise. So at some point, you're going to reach a point where you're stretching away and the background's going to get really noisy. But we're OK so far here, so I'm going to keep going. So now we can see we're starting to bring out these lobes, which are really interesting. And the stars are pinging out at us a bit more. They're looking fuzzy and bright, and I like that. So I'm going to keep that. But I think the background is a bit too bright, so we're going to go back to the levels again. Let's bring that to about there. And maybe just tweak the blue again. That's made it go a bit yellow, a bit the other way maybe. Oop, no, it's gone too yellow. It's gone too blue. Yeah, I think something like that really. I'd be I'd be happy to share that. Certainly on Facebook with my friends. Hopefully if you're new to imaging, you'd you'd be quite happy with that result as well. And all we did was manipulate the levels and the curves. So that's just two functions. And the same will apply in both GIMP, which is free to download, or Photoshop. Um I'm, a lot of people that are really into deep sky imaging move on to PixInsight. Um, I think I believe that works in a, a bit of a different way and I keep meaning to go and try that myself but to be honest I'm quite happy I've been using GIMP for so many years now that I'm just really comfortable with it and I found a lot of way around different problems using GIMP just through persistence I'm not I'm not so much one that, that looks at other people's tutorials but I do spend a lot of hours on it just tweaking stuff and that's that's why I feel comfortable doing tutorials on it because I've just I've just put so many hours into GIMP. It's yeah. So yeah, hope that's useful if you're new to imaging or even if you're not new to imaging. Bit of a challenge, just trying to process an image start to finish, um, just using levels and curves. Now I will say that it won't always be that easy. 
this only works if you've got good clean data but if you've got hot pixels walking noise um gradient where your image is bright one side dark the other because maybe you've got the moon out something like someone shining more on one side of the sky than the other anything like that you can have all sorts of problems that levels and curves aren't going to fix and you will need to use different tools to do that i may do some other gimp tutorials to show you how to get around those problems but for now i think while it's raining and i can't get out imaging um i think that will do for this tutorial i'm going to go in and upload it to youtube and i just want to thank my channel members and patreons for all the support you give and the encouragement by going out your way to support me and thanks to anyone who watches my videos. If you enjoy them and you're not subscribed, please consider doing so for more tutorials and more astronomy videos and astrophotography videos and videos about cameras and videos about telescopes and all sorts. And I hope it's not raining where you are and you can get out there and capture some images. Maybe try the challenge of just using levels and curves to process it. See how that goes. And until next time, clear skies, tell us to sod off and I'll see you in the next video.